potentially the sort of people who could attend tomorrow may be, may be vulnerable, in pain. Um, should you really be offering them any sort of advice on ending their lives? Look, there could be some vulnerable people attending. There's going to be a lot of people that are attending who want to have access to information so that they can stop worrying about this issue. This idea that there could be some inadvertent provision of material to someone who is vulnerable, therefore no one should get the material, I think is a false argument. But doesn't it worry that there may be even one person Well, are we saying vulnerable? that we should never talk about this topic because there might be one person out there and they might get the wrong information, so let's just all go away so and So that not wouldn't talk. worry you then? If somebody I would like to see the fact that... When Get people come to this meeting tomorrow, they'll walk it. out of this meeting tomorrow feeling immensely benefiting from having access to good information. The fact that most people will walk out of that meeting feeling a whole lot better, empowered, happier, is something that's worth pursuing. Sh surely uh, it must worry you that somebody who's, say, suffering from depression could go to your event tomorrow could end up committing suicide instead of getting proper support for their mental health problems, for example. There's a lot of mites in there. Someone might come to the meeting, they might do this, they might do that, so therefore you better do nothing. I've already told you that most people who come to the meeting tomorrow will want to come along and will benefit from it, but we're going to say to them, you're not going to have that opportunity because there's a possibility that someone could get information that they might misuse. No, I don't think it's a worth, worthwhile... So it's a to... risk you're willing to take, is of that what you're saying? Of course it's a risk we're willing to take, because in this instance, this information is important you're, you're to get out there. You're happy for people... I think happy to, to, to keep take going. Their, you're, you would be happy for people to go ahead and take their own lives when, in fact, if they'd received the proper care, help and support, they may have recovered. This is a total hypothetical. There's absolutely no evidence for what you're saying. Well, you're proposing this. I've never seen it, but maybe it's possible. What I'm telling you will happen tomorrow, which you don't seem to take much concern about is that most people who come along are going to feel immensely benefited from knowing what they've been trying to find out for a long time, how they can peacefully end their own lives in a reliable and painless way. And that will give them the comfort, the strength, empower them, and by and large they will live longer if they don't get themselves into one of those desperate situations. The commonest way the elderly people in Wales end their lives now in such situations is by hanging. We can do better than that. Well, that's not strictly true, is it? What's well, not tr strictly true? That the people end their li elderly people end their lives through hanging. The commonest method used by the elderly who take their own lives is by hanging. That's a Bureau of Statistics figure. I can get it for you. What are you hoping to achieve by this? The, the well, law hasn't changed significantly on this. Relatives are now less likely yes. to be prosecuted, we, aren't they? We see that the guidelines that have been introduced here in the UK are very progressive. Keir Starmer's guidelines are good. It'll allow us now to at last set up a euthanasia clinic in London where people will be able to get the information and not have to travel across to Switzerland to access a peaceful death. They'll be able to have that death they want now in the comfort of their own homes here in Britain. Dr Nishka, thank you for talking to us this evening.